Well, greetings, everybody. Um, it was really quite an honor to be asked to introduce a good friend and a former LHS classmate. This time it's the other LHS. It's the real one. Uh, <laughs> um, as our guest speaker this evening. I know there are many of you in this room that remember our friend Joe Novello from those LHS days. That was, and if, that was then, and if you fast forward 57 years, you'll see the list of his accomplishments are many. Dr. Joseph R. Novello grew up in Lorraine and graduated from Lorraine High School in 1958. He graduated with honors from the University of Notre Dame with a major in journalism and then went on to earn his medical degree from the University of Michigan and uh, interned at Cleveland Metro Hospital. Dr. Novello practiced family medicine with his father, Dr. A. J. Novello in Lorraine, followed by his assignment as a flight surgeon with the U.S. Navy. Dr. Novello practices adult and child adolescent psychiatry and is also a qualified expert on forensic psychiatry and participated in a wide range of civil and criminal cases. Dr. Novello is also active in the academic world. He's authored two textbooks in psychiatry and has contributed several scientific papers to the medical literature. He maintains a practice in Washington, D.C. and the Virginia area, and especially well known in those areas because of his interest in communicating and communicating psychiatric information to the general public. In Washington, he has hosted his own daily radio call-in program, uh, and his regular feature, The Family Doctor, has appeared in D.C. area TV news. Dr. Novell has also been active in the media on a national level, and has appeared on such programs as uh, Good Morning America, Nighttime, and the Today Show. In 2010, Dr. Novello was awarded the esteemed top doc ranking in the Washingtonian Magazine um, for outstanding work as a child, adolescent, and forensic psychiatrist. He has written four books for the general audience, including the myth of more, and other life traps that sabotage happiness that you deserve. And uh, I understand that we've got copies here for you to purchase and Joe to sign. And uh, he also has done publishing in the magazine world, Woman's World, for several years. The scary thing is, I guess, is that I don't think he's done yet. <laughs> uh, in fact, I looked at the 1958 Cemetery yearbook today. Emily said, what are you doing down in the basement before you go to work? And I said, i got to get something. So I, I managed to find it. And I noticed that Joe Novello was voted as most likely to succeed. <laughs> and I'd say he has. Dr. Uh, Novello is married to Ambassador, who I've been told I can call her Luba, and I will since um, I'm Slovenian and, and even though we're close, um, I might mispronounce it. And she was raised in Mansfield, Ohio, and I understand an Ohio State graduate. So she can bond with a lot of folks in the room here. So we are glad to have him and Luba here this evening for Lorraine Historical Society to present a view of a Lorraine state of mind. So please give a warm welcome to Dr. Joseph R. Novello. Gracias, amigo. Cinkuya. Fala Lepo. Spasiba. Mille grazie. And finally, Thank you, my friends. Now, I'm not standing up here saying thank you, my friends, in all these different languages, and I could add more. I could say, Logudare, uh, Logudaran, but I'm not trying to tell you how many languages I picked up since I left Lorraine in 1958. In fact, to the contrary, uh, the point of my using those phrases is to communicate to you that. 
Those are all ways of saying thank you that I learned right here in Lorraine as a kid growing up. I learned those things in the living rooms of my friends. And that's a value that, that I've taken uh, forward. I use those words and phrases as Luba and I travel. Uh, I use many of them every day uh, in my new hometown of Washington, D.C. Why? Uh, you might say that a lot of us kind of were brought up that way, <laughs> uh, having a bit of knowledge and a whole lot of respect for people in their diverse cultures and their values and their languages. The uh, poet laureate, you could call her Lorraine's own Nobel laureate, Toni Morrison, re recently said in a New York Times interview, Lorraine was a place where immigrants were everywhere. The schools were mixed. There was one high school. We all played together. That was Toni Morrison's Lorraine, and that was my Lorraine, too. But before we go on, I have to ask you, anybody here like the Cavaliers? <laughs> Cavaliers, huh? Let's hear it. Let's hear it for the Cavaliers. Now, how about the Dukes and Barons? Whistlers? Southerners? Why high jackets? Why high sweaters? Echoes? Junior gems? The list goes on. But we all know, then as now, the Cavaliers were number one, right? Okay. Lorraine is a city in Lorraine County, Ohio, United States. The municipality is located in northeastern Ohio, on Lake Erie, at the mouth of the Black River, about 30 miles west of Cleveland. So says Google. <laughs> but what does Google know? We know better. Lorraine is much more than a place on a map. Lorraine is a state of mind. Wherever life has taken me over the past 57 years, I've taken the values, the attitudes, and yes, some of the behaviors, not all of them good. <laughs> I learned right here in Lorraine from 1944 when I arrived as a three-year-old to when I left at age 17 for college in 1958. My Lorraine state of mind. What is it? Well, first of all, I have to tell you, I relearned something this evening about my Lorraine state of mind, just standing around in the back there greeting you, some of you as you were coming in and so forth. I learned that among so many people here that I haven't seen in so long, it took about 30 seconds for us to reconnect. And I swear, in that 30 seconds, we were all 10th graders back at Lorraine High School. <laughs> you know, all the barriers come down and we connect. Uh, and it kind of made me wonder once more, uh, is there life after high school? <laughs> Maybe it's uh, no wonder that I've written two books on adolescent psychiatry. <laughs> no wonder that we Lorraineites are so inclusive, so quick to connect. We grew up that way. Come on over, meet you at Lakeview, go into Kids Day, pick up Benji Norton, we'll go to Ed Kingsley's driveway and play basketball. See you at Sutter's, or maybe Mary's. Where's club on Thursday? Let's go to Vermi. We all knew each other, and we got along. Well, except, except for a certain Sunday at the end of November, at City Field, where the Dagos played the Polacks. <laughs> you had to be there. <laughs> when I first moved to Washington in 1974, uh, I ran into an NBC reporter who had recently moved there from Cleveland. Uh, I had met him when he was working at KYW uh, in Cleveland, and I was doing some summer announcing work at WEOL uh, in Illyria. And we greeted each other, and he pulled me aside. He said, Joe, so I've got to tell you something. Living in Washington is different than living in Cleveland. I said, Lorraine. He said, OK, Lorraine. He said, it's different. And I said, what is it? He said, when you go to a party in Washington, 
you'll never meet the brother-in-law of the host. <laughs> and I think he's been right. Except when my brother-in-law, Chris, comes to Washington, you meet the neighbors, don't you? Chris, I'm, I'm glad you're so presentable. <laughs> my Lorraine state of mind uh, even played a, a part in my meeting my fabulous wife, Luba. Luba, please stand up so everybody can say hello to you. I was living uh, in Northwest DC and I, I kept hearing from my neighbors about this beautiful woman who lived right across the street from me. Mm -hmm. Just right across in one house down. And I never met her. I never laid eyes on her for a year and a half. Now, this is Washington where, you know, you don't know your neighbors. It wasn't Lorraine. A year and a half passed, true story, and I'd never laid eyes on her. And one day, I came home a little bit earlier, and my neighbor, Louise Crane, was standing outside, and she had, standing next to her, this beautiful woman who had a jogging suit on, must have just come back from a jog, and I figured, that's got to be the one. So I parked very quickly, got out of my car, walked over and said hello to Louise. Louise introduces me to Luba. She said, you know, you two should, uh, should talk. You should meet each other. And Louise kind of faded away and went back into her house. So we, we started talking. And being a guy from Lorraine, my ear is sensitive to accents. And as she's speaking, I said, excuse me, excuse me. I detect a slight accent. And she said, well, and I said, w where are you from initially? And she said, Macedonia? I said, Blagudaran. <laughs> and she said, how did you know that? And I said, well, where I grew up, we, we had a, a Macedonian church, and I grew up with some Macedonian friends. Well, she said, yeah, but, and I said, but you speak very good English. You speak very good English. <laughs> and she said, well, yeah, I should. I, I grew up in a small town in Ohio uh, called Mansfield. She said, it's, it's about halfway between Cleveland and, and I said, Columbus, just off 71, about 10 miles south of Ashland. <laughs> And she's looking at me and she's saying, what is this guy, you know? And she went on and she said, then I, I went on and I, I graduated from Ohio State. And I said, go box, go Woody, you know, OH, you know, IO, you know? And so a relationship was started uh, and then I, I had to let the cat out of the bag. Uh, I had to tell her that I too, was from a small town in Ohio. It was on Lake Erie, about 30 miles west of Cleveland. And she said, you're from Lorraine? <laughs> <laughs> well, here we are 15 years uh, later. Uh, but I have to confess to you, I didn't tell her everything about me at that first meeting in Louise Crane's yard. I had to hold something back, and it took several weeks and several dates before I got up the nerve to tell her. So we got together this one night, I think we were at dinner, and I tell her that I had to reveal something about my dark side. <laughs> and it's better, honey, I told you, that you hear it from me rather than it comes to you from somebody else. And she said, what? I said, I graduated from the University of Michigan. <laughs> you know what she said? <laughs> she looked at me and she says, well, it just goes to show you, nobody's perfect. <laughs> My Lorraine state of mind. Uh, a Lorraine state of mind is certainly about the values of hard work, and perseverance and self-reliance, the earliest settlers of Charleston on the shores of the Black River had to contend with Indians, 
recurrent outburst of typhoid, in the constant threat of home fires, uh, which would ravish the village from time to time. And that village, of course, was later to become Lorraine. Uh, Lorraine, in turn, would become a thriving industrial hub for much of the 20th century. Many of our grandparents in this room flocked here, not speaking a word of English, many of them, grateful for the jobs to be found. The steelworks, the shipyard. Thu Shovel, Nelson Stud Welding, later Ford and Fruhoff, and of course, Lorraine Products. <laughs> Our ancestors worked, I'll back to that. Our ancestors worked, and they worked hard. They worked to provide for their families, and to educate their children. The American dream became Lorraine's dream. The next generation would have it better. My own grandfather was one of the many non-English speaking immigrants who flocked to Lorraine in the early 1900s. He worked, he worked hard, he succeeded in several modest ways, but one of his greatest accomplishments was to put two sons through medical school. So by the time I came along, now a third generation Lorrainite, uh, I had it a lot better than my grandfather ever did. In fact, I had it better than my dad did. Uh, I even enjoyed what you might call certain privileges. But uh, let me tell you something. I was not raised to be a child of privilege. I learned it the Lorraine way, OK? You want something, folks? You got to work for it, OK? You may have to work hard. You may have to sacrifice for it. You have to tough it out. Now, help was always available. But that was always the last resort. I always got more points if I was helping somebody else <laughs> than if I was asking uh, for help. In other words, I was raised like a Lorraine guy with a Lorraine state of mind. Now, I know that Lorraine has fallen on some harder times in recent years. The economy changes, jobs are moved, there are demographic shifts. But I know the character of Lorraine must live on. And it does. Stick it out, work hard, and there's this firmly held belief that yes, things will get better. Now, did I mention education just a little while ago? Sure I did. That's a Lorraine state of mind. I was very fortunate to grow up in Lorraine when a time when public education was right, fabulous, wonderful. It was really, really good. Uh, and over the years, I must tell you, I, I've had a great many teachers. Lou mentioned some of that bio. I wish you hadn't have read all of that. I wrote it myself, folks. <laughs> I've, had, I've had a lot of teachers, uh, college, medical school, surgical training at, uh, at Metro. Uh, psychiatric uh, residency program, flight training in the Navy. Uh, most of these teachers were very good. Some of them were, were outstanding, and a few were really very outstanding. But I tell you, not a single one of them, not a single one of them had as much influence on my life as my seventh grade teacher at Irving Junior High School. Her name was Ann Ganan. Uh, she, she didn't teach me how to remove an appendix. <laughs> she didn't teach me how to do psychoanalysis. She didn't teach me how to land an F4 on a carrier deck. She taught me something much more important than all of that. She taught me the joy of learning. And she had a way with words. She taught me the joy of words, putting words together writing, how to communicate your thoughts. And Anne Ganan was a stickler for grammar. Oy. A few years back, Luba and I were sitting 7.30 PM watching Jeopardy. Okay, And so we're watching, and one of the categories that comes up was English grammar. Okay, And 
the one question, I think it was in the $600 category, uh, was this. It was a quote, and the contestants were to supply the, the final word in the quote. And the statement went something like this. Never use a preposition to end a sentence blank. And I said, with. And Luba said, what? I said, with. That's, that's a rule of grammar. Never use a preposition to end a sentence with. I said, I got that in seventh grade, Miss Ganan. She said, you remember your teacher from seventh grade? I said, sure. She said, you should call her. And I called her. I got her on the phone. I, I had her number somewhere. I said, Miss Ganan, who's that? This Joe Novello? Joey Novello? I said, yeah, they, we're just watching Jeopardy. <laughs> I hadn't seen her. <laughs> yeah, watching Jeopardy. And remember you used to say, never use a preposition to end a sentence with? She said, yeah. I said, if I had been on Jeopardy tonight, I would have won $10,000. <laughs> she said, well, I always knew that would be worth something, Joe. <laughs> Uh, I, I also think of Lorrainites as resilient and tough, ready to bounce right back and keep going. We were buffeted going up by labor strikes, uh, plant closings. We had those Canadian soldiers that blew in in the summertime, and you know those those horrific northern Ohio winters. But we just kept going. Nothing seemed to stop us. I gotta tell you about something that happened last February in DC and Virginia. They closed the schools. Now, there was not a single flake of snow on the ground. <laughs> it's a true story. Why did they close the schools then? Because, folks, it was too cold. <laughs> now, I don't know what the temperature was. Cold for Washington was probably like 15 or 16 degrees. Now on days like that, you know, we'd walk home from school, right, bundled up. We'd walk in, we'd stand there, and our mothers would say something like, how come you're standing there? Go out and play. <laughs> uh, things are different now. <clears throat> My Lorraine, was a city of churches, too, by the way. Churches everywhere, of all religions. And people attended them. All you needed to know about someone was where he went to junior high and where he went to church. It all kind of followed from there. Now, I attended a number of, of churches uh, in Lorraine. Our home parish was St. Peter's, the Italian parish. Uh, but if we got up late on Sunday, we could go to Nativity, the Polish church, because they had a later mass. Or we go to St. Mary's, because they had an even later mass. That was the Irish church, okay? Uh, you walk in these churches, you know everybody anyway. It wasn't a bunch of strangers. Uh, and I attended other churches. I, I used to go to the Saturday night fellowship at the Congregational Church get involved with the Methodist Church, some outings to the Y in Illyria, and then we go to that Illyria Dairy where they have all those great Sundays and stuff like that. Uh, and I went to a great many bar mitzvahs of my friends at the temple on Reed Avenue. Now, I don't recall that, that any of us talked very much uh, about religion. It was kind of take it for granted. Uh, your friends went to church somewhere, and that was not a bad thing. When I went off to Notre Dame in 1958, the incoming freshmen were introduced to some words carved in stone above the entrance to that beautiful Sacred Heart Church. And it said, God, country, Notre Dame. <laughs> now, if we had had such a sign placed over the entrance to this city, it probably could have said something like, God, family, Lorraine. I, I can't talk about a Lorraine state of mind uh, without talking about our families. My family, your family. Uh, with the passing of, of my parents, uh, the heart and soul of my family now is uh, my sister Eileen. And so, <clears throat> please stand. Eileen 
like Jane probably no, needs no introduction after being secretary or the director of the Lorain County Medical Society for several years and doing so many things uh, in this, this uh, community. Uh, but we, we had a, an extended family and we were always taught to be family, to stick up for your family and your cousins. And I got some cousins here tonight too and I'd like all of you to stand, please, and be recognized. God bless all of you. Now, family was important, uh, especially, of course, my mom and, and my dad, my brother, my sister. Uh, but it was always stressed to us that we were part of a community. We were part of Lorraine, this place called Lorraine. And my parents, especially my mother, uh, set uh, just a wonderful example of involvement in the community. I don't know how she did it. She'd get us off to school in the morning. She'd be there for dinner when we got home after school. And in between, she was doing things out there uh, in the community. And you introduced uh, Lori Hoke uh, early. Hi, Lori. Uh, some years ago, uh, my mom and Lori Hoke and others got on a bus. They went to Washington uh, and uh, walked through the halls of Congress to lobby for funds for what became Lorraine Community Hospital, uh, and uh, they did some good things. And my mom was, was always doing that. My dad, too, although his medical practice consumed a great deal uh, of, his, uh, of his time. Uh, but I've taken that value with me, and uh, with Lubo, she has started her own charity, and we're involved with that, and so many uh, other things in our community. And I'm, I'm pleased to, to really sit here and hear the wonderful reports about this society. I, I want to congratulate you for what you're doing. It, it's just flabbergasting, and I'm, I'm just so impressed. Uh, this society has become, you know, part of the heartbeat of Lorraine, uh, it seems to me. You're, you're preserving the past, uh, Ben, and, and, and others, but uh, I, I think you're also preparing this community for the future uh, as well in, in, in a, a wonderful and, and ironic way. So I congratulate you on that. And by the way, I, I thank you for inviting me here tonight. So thank you, Lorraine. Thanks for my Lorraine state of mind. Uh, as I'm sure you can tell, I, I've never really left you. And uh, I'm humbled and I'm blessed that you have never left me. Now, in closing, I'd like to take you back to an earlier time. You can close your eyes and go back there if you wish. The year is late 1955, late fall, or early winter 1956. And the buzz around this town was the Lorraine High School Steeler basketball team. Now, they were something very, very special. They were highly rated in the state. They were a team way ahead of its time, uh, at a time when basketball was still played at a slow pace. You zone defenses, you pass the ball around until somebody decided to get off a two-handed set shot or maybe one-handed. They were run and gun. They scored lots of points. They were exciting to watch. They we played a pressing defense uh, from whistle to whistle, uh, and uh, they were won the Buckeye Conference and, and went several steps uh, into the state uh, championships. And uh, I grew up with four of the five guys who started uh, for that team were from the west side. Uh, their names probably legend in Lorraine sports, Carl Hartman, uh, Ron Bobel, Dale Reichert, Tom McConney, whose father Al was the coach, and Jim Andorka was the, the fifth uh, cog in that, uh, that team. And what I want us to focus on is something that developed over that season that was wonderful. There was a guy named Joe Hirsch. Now, Joe was a partner of Glenn Bobel's in Bobel and Hirsch, which was a grocery store at 7th and, and Broadway. And Joe had seen those boys come up. He didn't have boys of his own. He had two daughters, Rita and Harriet. And, and he was a great follower of, of all their sports events, and particularly this basketball team. And so as the season went on, he developed a cheer that he would let out once or twice during the game. And towards the end of the season, people used to wait for it. 
And he would sit down in front on the right as you watched, as you were looking at the stage, and he would get up, and the room would go silent. And it goes, Joe Hirsch, listen to this. And he would rear back like this, put his hand up against his face, and he would let out a yodel. And it went like this. Let's go, Lorraine. Yodel, lo, do, lady, who? Let's go, Lorraine. Thank you. Thank you. Muchas gracias, Chef Calisto, Lugarare, Valalepo, Mille gracias. God bless you. Thank you. <laughs>